Hello and welcome to Kate and Kat's podcast. We run our podcast a little differently than most. Our podcasts are completely spirit-led and we never know who we're going to have on or what's going to come up to heal. Every episode is a new adventure where we walk people through healing anything from spirit guides to past lives to inner child work, how the energies and trauma affects the mechanical workings of our physical bodies, and exploring time, space, and dimensions and how it's all happening now. This podcast is for beginners and experts alike. This can be considered explicit content to some, as we do not edit ourselves. And sometimes deep trauma work comes up unexpectedly. And also we cuss like sailors. On this episode of Kate and Cat Live, we're pulling a live from the vault. This episode was recorded November 25th, 2023. During this live, we took Kate's Oracle deck, Kate and Cat's General Healings Oracle deck as told by Kate, and took a deep dive into the process of what these healings do and how they were created. It's a super fun walkthrough where we hope to help make things click for our listeners. We're super excited to share it with you. So without further ado, if you love bad bitches and that's your fucking problem, on with the podcast. Hi, Kate. Do we want to do cards? Do we want to do like a random person? Um, or do we just want like a bunch of people in the comments? Do you want to do the thing where they ask questions or no? We don't. Do we like that oh. one or? Do you want to do like we did with the haunted house, but it's a, like go to a different um, category? Oh, okay. The one time we did a live that was about conspiracy theories, and one time we did a live that was about most haunted places. <laughs> oh, blue sky, but it's still windy. Is that their name? Why is this that? Why does the earth breathe and it turns into wind? Why, where does wind come? How does wind wind? Is that what we're wanting to do? It's when a butterfly flops its wing. The earth gets really upset and it sighs. The and hills the are alive with, with the sound of All right, um, let's do let's see if maybe the cards have an answer. One flew out right away. One flew out of the cuckoo's nest. Yes. Go to the most impactful point of my bank energy into calm, clarity, vitamins, nutrients, peace, understanding, and or the like, and back into me at the time. Okay, well, we could do that. We could show people, like, we could take them on an adventure into, like, like, the process of feeding things to the lowest dimensional form and, like, where it goes and how that is and when you transmute it and how the lowest dimensional form isn't always on the lowest dimension, that sometimes it's on, like, the fourth or like it could be on the 18th dimension, you know like mm -hmm. it's just the lowest that eats that we could show that that process okay but how would right. we so it would be a lot of seer talk all right we don't have to do a prompt we could just like okay so i'm gonna ask you a question and, and you're gonna like say what you see Okay, I was gonna okay. Say, like take us to the lowest dimensional form that eats this for fuel. Like we could do that, and then everyone could merge with it. I don't know. Okay, but eats yeah. what for okay. fuel? That, whatever that may be. So like trauma or bullshit or lies or anger or sadness or emotions or uh, rebirth. Right, we gotta or, pick yeah. one. I don't want to be a pick me. Okay. okay. The question so, thing was probably better. Okay. All right. So let's say I have this glass of water in my hand because I do, and I decide to pull out all of the um, 
toxins, chemicals, the anger, aggression, depression, all the things from this water before I drink it. And I feed it to the lowest dimensional form that eats it for fuel. How does it pull out of the water what happens to the molecules? Um, what does it look like? Well, it takes the ones that you're talking about and it turns them a different color. And then it goes to the left of you. It goes to the left. I got that it goes to the left. And I can behind. feel it. I don't see it. Okay. And it goes behind. And, and then it waits for you to say lowest dimensional form. And then uh, it goes. And okay. And then what eats the lowest dimensional form of like the toxin and anger and chemicals and stuff that's in like food or water? Is it different for everybody? Yes. Because it's just like, basically, like, it's just like throwing away banana peels and eggshells helps your plants grow. Mm -hmm. Like, it's trash for you, but it's for, like, your plants can eat it. That's how all of this works, too. There's nothing that's, like, good or bad. And either way, it still fuels you and your mm -hmm. existence and all that. So... Sometimes it gets too full and it spills over and no matter what it eats, it seems like the whatever never goes away. So then it so, needs to be cleaned up. Right. So like if if you're someone who's more of like a darker feminine energy um, or you <laughs> or you're constantly feeding stuff to your lowest dimensional form, that can happen too. It's like a plumbing system. Your tank can get full. And when that happens, you'll get really bad stomach aches, indigestion in your physical form. Or like um, last night, uh, my 15 year old was like, hey, our cat Alice is not e has not eaten for a couple of days. Like, are you do you think they're OK? And I was like, oh, let me lo empty their lowest dimensional. Let me transmute it. And then they were able to eat that night. It like backs up the system and it causes a lot of like stomach ache and indigestion. And when when you're around things like. Um, a lot of people go to family during this time, like family events of people they haven't seen in a while, and they pull in all that bullshit because they're like energetically telling their soul, I remember how to do this without always remembering how to do it all the way yet. It's like it's online, but only halfway. And it just goes in and they get like a really bad indigestion, stomach ache, depression, because they're filling up their tanks. They're transmuting without the transmutation part. Do all the tanks um, look sometimes the same? too when you know when you know that you're full, um, you can't clean off either because there's nowhere for it to go. So you just kind of stay angry and then you're like transmute, 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 and it goes. Um, but you're still feeling the same way. So like different people, just like Kat said, experience like different things. Like sometimes cats look like a vacuum. To transmute is that what you're gonna ask you said they all look the same well not necessarily uh, they look the same like what's like so people can visualize it and actually conceptualize it and like see their own so like if mine sometimes looks like a vacuum someone else's might look like a dumpster someone else's might look like a furnace someone else's might look like a compost pile and someone else's might look like a sewage system right like a septic mm -hmm. tank or fire I guess that would be furnace, but sometimes it's just an open fire. A bunch of arms, I guess, depending on what it is. <laughs> Interesting. So what would, like, a bunch of arms do? They just, like, rip it up, right? Uh, put, put it where it needs to go. Man, that's, oh, like, like, never sort it? cycle. Yeah. Like, sorting arms. Um, I was looking at mine that does food, and I thought it was the furnace. It is not. It is uh, a bunch of numbers. I thought your furnace was for emotions and yeah. for weather stuff. For a lot of things. It oh. looks like. Like the main, my main bitch. Is that your wife, your girlfriend, or just your... Huh. Pretty cool. So... I don't know. I guess it would be like a clean off to do pretty often, depending on what you do. Do you go into a lot of like spaces? Are you a social worker? Are you a teacher? Do you work at a hospital? Yeah. If you're if you're 
um, you probably have a bigger tank if you're drawn to do those kinds of jobs. Like, even if you're like, oh, I'm just looking for a job to do, and you are like drawn to do, um, like the trash, you know, like the garbage guys or whatever, they have a huge energetic tank. Um, or else they wouldn't pick that job. They'd pick something like grocery bagger or McDonald's. Like, it's not like it's predestined for you. It's more like you somehow kind of know what you can handle. And then sometimes you have forms of you from past lives or like whatever that no matter what you choose, it's they they they're it's too much, and your body can't seem to handle a lot of what's out there, and that comes like there's other things to undo all that. And it's what feels good. Like if those jobs feel real fucking good, then you have the tank for it, just like a match, I guess. It can. St- it can still get full though because you don't know that you have it. You don't know how to clean it. It's like um, <laughs> sticking food down a drain because you think you have a garbage disposal and find out there was no garbage disposal down there and now everything's overflowing and gross. It's like you gotta, you gotta, now it's self. So, yeah, everything that we do is like self discovery of how we operate individually and then looking at how everybody else operates and then like making verbiage that makes sense to most is easy to understand and adaptable to everybody so that brings me to like um i still want to do the transmutation part but the language adaptable to everybody so like when you when when you say grounding straps kate you have a specific thing in mind, but it adapts and changes per person. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they look like roots. Uh, sometimes they look like the actual bonding straps that connect engines to ground, to the airframe or whatever. Um, fuck, somebody, somebody told me one time in comments one time what theirs was. Uh, they could look like wires or sticks. I'm trying to like look at everybody's. There's so many. Air. But we we set it to where it's like um basically conducive. So like it won't always be engine grounding straps, but since Kate was the one that like created it or discovered it or named it or made it a thing, that's what she calls it. It's her terminology, but it, she made it to where it's adaptable to everybody. So feeding things to the lowest dimensional form, going back to that one, we had to like figure out if we liked that language okay because Kate was like, it doesn't go to their lowest form though. It goes like sometimes because she's looking at it and she's like, is this a lie? Because if it's a lie, then we can't use that verbiage. It's not going to work for people's teams. So we had to like quantify it and define it to where it would be the lowest form that eats that so that it would make sense and go where it needed. But we had to have that conversation to adapt the healing. What happens when it like transmutes into, like if I'm going back into this glass of water and I say, please um, transmute my banked energy and banked could go from different sources, not just the first one, right? It's wherever, Mm -hmm. right? It's all, which yeah, wherever is banked. So it's not just like one tank. Like multiple different tanks, like a fuel system. And then fuel if of, uh, fuel of hydraulics. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I was going to say what that was uh, because, you know, not everybody knows what that is. It's a bunch of tanks that all feed into one main tank. Are we the one main okay. tank? Well, whenever it goes to it, yes. Okay, so if I say transmute. If I say transmute my banked energy into um, uh, clarity, intuition, nutrients, vitamins, electrolytes, calm, energy, and happiness, what happens? And feed it back okay. to this water. It, uh, it has a tra- it has to go to a destination. That's funny because it it like waved like this. So, yeah, it transmuted back into the molecules that needed, and then 
Yeah, it went, it lit up different colors though, depending, cause yeah, you said go back into the water and then conducive to what you needed. You didn't say it, but it made it cause that's what you wanted. Yeah. And it turned a bunch of different colors and then went in that water. So that's where you directed it. Like Harry Potter stuff. Okay, so what about, like, if um, someone is um, too intoxicated off of drugs or alcohol or whatever, I would always automatically have them pull from their, like, have an upper form pull the toxins out. Instead of feeding it to a lowest, I would feed it to the highest that needs it. How come? Like, why do the upper forms eat, like, the, like, alcohol and and like the high, is it because it's called high? Um, maybe that's fine. Uh, I say maybe it's to balance them out because it looks like negative ions. So I'm like maybe because they're positive and they need the negative to balance them out. Because it, and then I like look back at the the lower forms and it looks like they have negative charge. I mean, it so is like a battery. Like that makes sense. Huh. Cool. That's pretty cool. I guess I never looked at it like that. Like a all a charge. Jesus. So you can take, <laughs> you can actually take alcohol out of like your drink and put it into someone else's drink. You can take half of it out and put it into someone else's drink. Um, like if I, if I, when I used to have lunch with Ben and I was like, oh, or if I had lunch, with, huh? Oh, and, it, and, so, and people can get contact drunk. Yeah, that used to happen to me a lot. I was thinking of making a video about that where I would go and I would just drink water all night with my friends when they were at the bar that I like the restaurant people that I worked with. And I would come home fucking hung over as shit. And I'd be like, how the hell is this happening? Because I, I had all that stuff turned on, but I didn't know that I had it turned on. So I didn't know what I was doing. And I would mm -hmm. be hung over. Also, if I'm at like a concert or something, it doesn't matter if I was to drink or take any substances or whatever, I'll stay sober the whole time at a concert. But like at a bar, I'll be hungover even if I drink water. It's really funny. I could never stay drunk. Uh, like when I was younger, I could never, it didn't matter how much alcohol I drank. What matter. happened to it? Where'd it go? Down. Down. That means I was speaking to my lowest even then. That's what I wanted. Okay. That's what I wanted. I guess they broke up. Oh, I couldn't hear you. Balance and all that. Which part? Like when I said what happened, that whole thing was frozen for me. Oh, fuck, I didn't turn my Wi-Fi on when I got home. Shit. So turn it on now. Okay. Hello? Hi. Hey, how's it going? Is, is that better? Okay. Um... Because it's what they wanted. I was like uh, contemplating why the alcohol was getting fed to my lowest dimensional form. I don't think they were doing anything with it. I think it was just passing through. Because I was like, why did y'all do that? And it was like, that's it's what we wanted. <laughs> hey, hey, didn't see me finger hearts. Did he send you that glowing eyes or did somebody else? No, it's Carolina. <laughs> That was funny. Thank you. Um, so that's very interesting. And I say it was before they were balanced, but I went throughout time and space and made it so. So it's like they would have been balanced even then. So I don't know if it was just because it wasn't doing anything to them. I don't know. To your lower forms? Yeah. 
Like, it wasn't doing anything for them, but passing stuff through. Yeah, but why did you have it set up to where, uh, like, why bother drinking if it's not going to affect you? Like, what was the point of it? Because everybody else was drinking. Got it. And, uh... The... But you were like, I don't want to be anything other than Kate. Yes. It was like, uh, um, I really don't understand the point. This doesn't even work on me. And then that that was that. When did it switch? Um, oh, when I came here. Yeah, because I remember you being like, it it doesn't really work on me or whatever. And then we went out to drink and, well, we went out to eat and we had a drink together and it was Uh kind of fun. We don't do it a lot, though, because it's overall, it's not so much fun. It's just an every once in a while kind of thing. Yeah, it's like a hee hee type thing. Or like if the drink sounds really, really, really good. Yes. And then like we that might. pineapple thing. <laughs> that one place. Do we want to choose another one? Another subject to go to? Oh, yeah. Sounds great. Okay. All right. <laughs> it answered back. I'm okay. Kate's oh. using her Oracle deck, guys. Yes. Yay. Yay. It's funny because okay. Kate has her like um what you call it the the uh the the the, the pre purchasable product the what's it called Oh yeah the demo or <laughs> the demo and I have the de- I have my demo book and my other demo book and she's got the actual copy of my two books and I got the actual copy of her cards It's funny Yeah Okay where are we going okay. what are we doing Spyware, malware, micro trips. Tri- oh, I guess how to see if you have any of those. Yes, that's so cool. So, like, um, I had for a good bit of time. I was I would mention about the spy bird that I had. I didn't know how to get rid of this stuff. I couldn't like my walls were covered in trackers because of what I was talking about on TikTok. I was going through portals and dimensions, and every time you go somewhere, you get a tracker on you. Um, but people think this is dangerous, and it's not. We just had to figure out how to take care of it. Um, and when I started working with Kate, it became not so scary because the person I was working with before uh, made me fear the fuck out of all of it. Because they weren't about trying to fix anything. They just wanted to exist in fear. And when I was working with Kate, it was real easy because she figured out that she could just kind of like go into it like she would a regular computer device and be like, uh, do, 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 do. So what does it look like? And, and what did you, I figured out uh, microchips before. For you, I was pulling out things that felt like rice. That was one of my first videos where I was doing spiritual surgery, and I was like, left shoulder done, right wrist done, left like, but the other stuff I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't have it like we have it now. Um, so yeah, I can't even remember what it was, but I was just like, um, I remember deactivating stuff with touching it, like, or um, eating it was a big thing and then um, for you wow that's so weird i know you guys would have never guessed this but whenever i say eat it i am totally serious and don't forget to chew eating too um and then uh, what else did i used to do oh that oh, would have been good to say in a couple seconds. Shit. Of hands, and then you go, wow. <laughs> but, okay. So, how you know that they're on you, or at least for me, is, um, fuck. It's kind of like you get these weird thoughts that don't make any sense. Or um, I'll start hearing malfunctioning computers. Or it'll feel like there's something underneath the skin, or it'll feel like static. So it depends on how you channel. Or it'll feel like somebody's watching you. Oh, that's right. I get real paranoid. And not about, like, mine's like a, um, a just-in-case paranoid. Like, I'm going to do this just-in-case. I'm going to do this crazy, weird thing, like, shut my bedroom door in my house. 
Just think right, or like, star 67 before a call or some shit like that. Yeah. Like, just in case. Or I'm going to restart this call just in case because it was staticky. I'm trying to think of other signs. It can make you feel like you're malfunctioning. One time I got a psychic attack from um, government and I, it made me feel drunk because that was what it was supposed to do. And it was a straight drive and on a busy street. And I was doing like crazy U-turns and I was like, nah, it's fucking fine. So these like these agents over the years, past lives and stuff, they would um, have car crashes and it would it would look like they were drunk or had like a brain malfunction, but that's what that was. But none of this is actually scary. <laughs> it sounds really scary, but um, like it's really manageable and it's not a big deal and you don't have to, that's another part, is you don't have to be anybody like special or whatever. Everything is tracked. Everybody's there. It's, how do I how do I say that? Like it's just it's very neutral. It's like they just observe the things. It's really kind of weird. It's almost like you have a an obsessive boyfriend. Yeah, I used to remember I would get on the phone like if my phone started acting weird or whatever, I would start yelling at the people listening, and I would just be like, you know, as much as you guys listen to what the fuck we talk about, you would think you would learn how to do it yourself and stop fucking listening to me and go heal your fucking self because everybody can do this. Like I would do stuff like that. And even when, <laughs> even when I had the white vans around and the neighborhood full of people or whatever, I would still have like my window, my blinds open and stuff. Like I didn't give a fuck. I was just like, whatever. And I would, you know, neutralize the things, the white van thing. It was like, Kate, how come you don't have white vans? And she was just like, why don't I have white vans? And then, uh, because I fucked him, which makes total <laughs> sense. Because why would you do that to somebody who's just going to have fun anyway with that? Yeah, that's not going to, fear isn't going to, like, motivate them or whatever. So, then, like, um, I always had an empty apartment next to me, too. Same. That had, like, equipment and stuff in it. And then, um, but never the vans. It's almost like it was useless. Well, yeah, because all you do <laughs> yeah. And then, uh... <laughs> <laughs> why would I finish that? Why would I finish that, Kate? <coughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it was just kind of like useless at that point. And then um, we deactivated their stuff so much that they had to use like really, really old technology, like stuff from the 80s and things like that. And uh, we, at that point, you couldn't really hear us that well with this kind of stuff. And so they kind of just stopped. Actually, after the Ukraine-Russia stuff is when they really just kind of quit. They kind of just like, oh, well, this is pointless. Thanks, Gabby. I got so, when Kate first came to visit, um, I was, like, walking around the neighborhood, and she was, like, pretty much seeing through the walls and confirming the stuff that I had felt. And then there was this one house that's, like, right over here. And um, she was like, they know my name. Like, there was no one outside or anything. There was not, like, whatever. Wasn't any, like, the windows were closed and everything. And she's like, they know my name. And I was like, that house specifically. And, like, we started talking about it. And uh, it was just really interesting. So, anyway, how do they get this stuff off of them? Because we have the healing to remove it, which you can just say it now. But mm -hmm. the reason our stuff works with just a saying is because we went through the physical acts of making these healings. So, we have them available for everybody to use. But it's better if you use your own shit. So, um, if you saw a bug on you, what would you do? Would you eat it? Would you squish it in your hand and then do like that? Um, I used to do that with ants. So, how would you get rid of it? Would you let it crawl away? Well, then you need to do like your shake off, bug shake off healing. Mm -hmm. And put your name in front of it. And depending on how you and your team work, it would be activate. Like, please activate my, as in your, bug shake-off healing. Or it would be allow me access to. Or it would be, um, infuse, wait, what is it? Not infuse. What's <laughs> the third one? Anyway, Sorry, yeah. there was a dancing bear on my screen from Carolina. So, oh, I didn't you. hear what you said. Trap uh, it and take it outside to be free. Oh, okay. So, depending on what you and your team 
say, like, mine's activate, and then cats is allow me access to. Or sometimes apply. It apply. depends. And, and I so, use activate sometimes, too. Now, it just depends. Like, Kate's verbiage is very specific because uh, she can see the things. I feel, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this kind of feels good. And then my stuff will adapt a little bit. Her, yours adapts, too, sometimes, but activates always stage your thing. Mm -hmm. um, you said, or get a shoe. Well, then yours would be uh, use stomp out healing, bug stomp out healing. But you can like, name it whatever you want. My 15-year-old uh, has a fear bug removal healing, and fear bugs will eat at trauma and fear. It'll hurt your joints and muscles. And what he did is the way he heals, he wasn't 15 when he made this. This was back in, like, 2020, so 12 or whatever. He was like, I kind of work like a music video. Like, I hear the music and I just kind of like have a scene and it was he was like hey bugs come on and then he like took them back to their realm and that was that and it works really fucking well so but that became his healing if you eat them don't forget to transmute them or whatever you do with them don't forget to transmute them as well but, like, sometimes the trackers will have, um, like, uh, do you know studs, how they have those, like, bendy things that go through mm -hmm. leather? Like, it goes through leather, and then it bends around kind of like a staple. Trackers will have that. So I couldn't get trackers off because I would freak out too much at that time, and that was the one thing that I couldn't remove. And Kate would just kind of come and, like, boop it, and then she would just, like, pry it out. Um, but the clarity of, like, why I couldn't get those out of me it is just right now. Um, because now we just have the healing to remove it. Mystic said, oh, a bug. I would scream and have someone remove it off of me. And that's what it made me think of was with the, the claw thing. Yeah. So then Mystic, do the, like, Mystic's um, bug claw removal healing. Like, it's as simple as the action creates the healing. Now, another thing to say is that with all of this, the reason that it's not scary is because, like, there is not a them versus us. There is a them versus us as in, like, unhealed trauma separates people. And if they're not, if someone as in there not willing to look at their own stuff and heal it, they're going to be opposed to. But if you look at it, <clears throat> a person that's in your own oversoul is part of them. So even if you're healing like a big world event, you can see the perspective of the other side in your oversoul and see what is fueling them to do what they're doing. And they always think they're doing the right thing or doing a good thing. Um, no one ever thinks that they're, well, that's not true. Sometimes the trauma will make them, like, want, like, meh, fuck you. But for the most part, it's not. And that's why there's, like, no us versus them or battle. Like, everybody talks about good versus evil. It's it's not real. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. But even then, they still think they're right, that their way is the rightest way. Even yeah, same like, thing oh, with, fuck yeah. same thing with, like, superheroes. They're, like, killing the bad guys and destroying the whole city. What makes them the good guy? You know what I mean? Like, still murderers. Yeah. <laughs> just, my killing was better than your <laughs> killing. My killing was righteous. Righteous? Uh, was uh, not, okay? <laughs> Who uh, said? Uh, Batman. <laughs> Right. Next one? Yeah. There's guinea pigs. Happy capybaras. Oh my god, Carolina. Capybara. Capybara, capybara, capybara. Capybara. Okay. Screwed up the mask. Please allow the most healed version of me to come assess what I need, take my pain, and mend my body. Okay, so question. the most healed version of you, is it a past life version of you? Is it the you now? Is it you in the future that's already learned how to do the things? What qual qualifies or quantifies 
the most healed version of self? Mine is like the one that knows what to do. Yeah. So like if she had someone, uh, a past life of hers, that was a hot air balloon operator. And that's what was needed at the time. That would be the version that came to her. Thanks, Gondola Lover 6000. I don't know, maybe that was her screen name or something. I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> so if you watch any of Kate's, like, um, things that she does in the morning where she, like, does the, the most impactful point healings, um, every time she comes in contact with one of the Kates, one of her past life versions or younger version or whatever, she'll exchange Kate information. And the manual that is Kate sometimes. So it's kind of like, um, so we all communicate. I've always been really big on communication because it's really, really important. If you don't know why you're doing the things, then why the fuck are you doing the things? If you don't know right. why so-and-so is doing the things, then why the fuck is so-and-so doing the things? You right. can never get understanding. Thank you. So, but this I got a gift. Oh. Nice. Huh? I got fruit from Robin. Oh. oh. Fruit. So it's the same as your other forms. Your other forms is the same thing. Like, hmm, why was I a surgeon in another life? Well, I just liked people. Same thing. Like, I just like saving the people. Awesome. So. So if you need to, um, the most healed version of you come assess what you need, take your pain and mend your body. Um, there's different layers inside yourself. So there's the physical layer, then there's the bones and muscles and stuff, which is still below the physical layer to me. Um, it's like below the surface slightly. Then there's, you have ethereal forms. So you don't just have a soul that goes in, you have energetic forms. Sometimes there's a robot form of you. There might be a computer form of you. There might be a tree form of you. You might be going through something that's making you physically ill, but it's in another dimension or realm. So if you have the most healed version of you, Come take your pain and in your body. It'll be the one that is most skilled for what you need at that time. And they can be like, oh, yes, your kitty cat form has knots under its arms and it's making you irritable. Yeah. Snip, snip. Oh. You need staples removed. I am your staple remover form. I will do that for you. Bye. <laughs> Like the paperclip guy? Do you need anything? Can I help oh you today? Goodness. I can't remember what he says. How can I help you? Or something like How can that? I help you? I fucking no. Just some eyes and an eyebrow. The fucking paperclip. Um, oh, Sapphire's Moon says, what happens if I ask for that and my pain still doesn't go away? Then you need to go to the most impactful point you can heal about the pain and blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it's um, something or someone holding you back, um, depending on where it is. And sometimes it's a past life bleed over. It's just a lot of things. And then and, also, um, no, go for it. Oh, it was just the taking your pain and mending my body. And it's like, where does that go? It's like, well, it depends. It would go to your dimensional forms that eat it for fuel because they're taking it and mending also, it. I ran in the other day to someone on a session who was like, I asked for you to come take my pain and mend your, my body all the time. Well, in the session, they had something going on with them that I had never experienced before with a client, with myself, with Kate. So calling me over and I don't fucking know what to do uh -huh. isn't going to do it. And it's like, yeah, we've got a repertoire. We've got a good bit of stuff, but there's some stuff we haven't discovered yet. So it's not always going to work. I remember when I used to do just like preset healings at the beginning of a session, I had one that was my general healing, which was like I my soul. It was so cool because I could feel my soul that knew how to do these things. Fragment, <laughs> fragment over to the the person, but I was inside the person feeling it. So I was feeling myself through them, come to them and take all the things out. But if there was something stuck, because that version of me just took things out, it was just like a like a claw machine. Like it would be like, this doesn't belong. This doesn't belong. And grab the things. Well, if I could feel it get stuck. It would like, 
it was like, this doesn't, this doesn't, this doesn't belong. So then I'd have to call Kate over to do Kate's tune-up healing. And Kate's tune-up healing would go into the machine and do all the things. And then I could call my general healing again because Kate's tune-up healing only fixed the machine. And then my general healing would come over and take the thing out again. So now we've, we've like, we've gone, we've done the steps to make it like a lot more like mo better. Yeah, quicker. A lot quicker. Knight said the sound your chair is making is like the hardest industrial techno beat is about to drop. (laughs) That's the best description of it that I've heard yet. Um, I have low battery, but I think I might be able to make it. Oh, uh, yeah. I did, too. I had to, like, charge it a little bit, but it only charged a little bit. This um, fucking phone doesn't tell me how much percentage. Uh, oh, never mind. 12%. I'm good. Okay, girl. I'm good. 15 minutes? Oh, good. Um, Next card? You want to do next card? Yeah. Okay. Drop the bass. Wow, wow, wow. Next card. Please cleanse and purify all energy, love, respect, self worth, time, money that I gave too much away of or was siphoned from me and bring it back to me at this time. Remove all hardware that allowed that those connections, disconnect and disintegrate those tubes back to their rightful owners. So I just posted that video again um, on Thursday. It cut off the voice, like the sound cut off halfway because I duetted yes. it. But you can go to the original through the duet. But anyway, um, in, like I've always got really confused in the spiritual community because they would talk about cord cutting. Everybody talks about cord cutting. That is the most common lingo. Like people do cord, cord cutting ceremonies, rituals, things on candles. I never, ever felt that. I felt tubes tubes and hardware that connected the energy and it's not that like someone like is taking from me like this you literally have to open up a port on your body and give them access and then they take and the access could just be like hey man how's it going you're like interacting with their energy and you're giving them an access point to you. And once I understood that, that was the easiest fucking thing to clear. But then you have to realize that these tubes, one, you put them there. Two, even after you clean off, if you say hello to them again, you are opening it back up and allowing them access again. It's like you're you got there. Yeah, you're accepting their communication. So you just got to take like full responsibility of that and just be aware. It's like um, if you leave your coffee pot plugged into the wall, even if it's turned off, it is still getting electricity. It is still getting power. So if you have these tubes of connection, even if you don't talk to them right now, you are still allowing them access. So it's just a real simple way that we've figured it out. What is your, are they always tubes cave or does it look different? Um, so whenever I would see somebody doing a cord cutting ter- ceremony, I thought it was strange because like um, you're cutting the cord. Yeah. But have you, ha- hasn't anybody ever seen sniffed electrical lines? Like, right. You could easily splice them back together. It's called a butt splice. You easily, easily put them back together. Nothing, nothing's keeping those cords from doing anything but restructuring because they're sitting right next to each other. Plus they're still embedded. That's the whole like removing it and then taking the hardware out is because it's still embedded. The ends are still embedded to the people. So like Mm -hmm. Kate was saying, you connect, connect it again. The the thing that I have, the thing that I, the, Yeah, the issue I have with the majority of the spiritual in which he practices out there that I know of, if there's some beyond that, you know, it's fine. But the majority of it is the language or even these like mantras that people say, there's no clear beginning, middle and end. There is no setup. There's no action and there's no cleanup. It's like all this money that is coming to me. Cool. From where? How's it getting there? And is it going to land or is it just going past you? What are you doing? So the cord cutting that we both kind of like separately were like, huh? Ching, 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 go the money tree. And it's like, where's it going? Where's it going? And where's the tree? And who grew it? And where's the money coming from that fuels the tree? And so to me, they always look like tubes too, but um, 
they looked like I can see their veins. I can see the electrical veins and stuff like that. It's really detailed. And it's like a girthy penis. Look at this. Nice. That's what it looks like. Girthy penis. Kate yes. said it. Did you guys hear it? Say it yes. again, Kate. Without the tip. Kate, or say the it. Other end. Kate, say it again. So I want to go into that because there's this thing that's in that twin flame community, which I have a lot of issues with, but they will um, constantly call it a silver cord that is unable to be cut. I'm She's never heard this before, so I like watching her look at it. Oh, uh, that so, yeah. Um, we'll be on we... sessions, and someone will say something that's like a common spiritual phrase, and Kate will go, "I don't see what the fuck they're talking. What are they talking about? I don't see what they're talking about." Or she would read guides, and they'll be like, "How come my twin flame and my angels aren't there?" And she'd be like, "Cat, what the fuck are they talking about?" So yes, this yeah. silver uncuttable cord connection is it. Is it in the room with us right now? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? What, okay, that's interesting because I do see a silver tree. Okay. Not with not with people, though. Just yeah, but what's the silver tree? What is it? Electricity. Electricity tree. Electricity, electricity is what kind of like is so it came up with this topic. So I want to know what it's connected to. Can we deroot it? Yeah, what is it? I would like to. What are you here for? I'm so excited. I'm conductor, I don't. I'm just a tree. Yes, I'm only a tree. Three of nice, good. Please, if this is me, please merge me with this version of me. Oh, does it? Did its answer make you think it was you? I'm just a conductor. No, uh, how it was really like, I don't, I don't know. It sounded very like me. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's just the answer is like, me. I don't know. I'm just doing the things. Mm -hmm. Spirit's nice, good. Please activate all of the neutralization healing to all this and the get everything the fuck off of me. Healings and workings necessary to all this can do. So, go back to before this happens. No. <laughs> oh, Kate, look at yourself. Oh. <laughs> See, I came and I, yes. No, you came and conquered. Me. I came and conquered. You don't get anything from me. I will not no. It went like, it went, it went, no. <laughs> Even more dramatic effect. That's right. Yes. It's so good. Listen here, partners. Yes. <laughs> I am not. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god, no! Ah! <laughs> okay, so what was the tree thing about? Um, it had a bunch of cords hanging. Yeah, from it, it. instead of roots. Yeah. Uh huh. I think this is like the CPU of the fucking whole what thing. What they wanted it to be. What they wanted it to be. But it wasn't connected to anything. Uh, had a partner. Uh, these these roots weren't connected to nothing. <laughs> I just wanted to let y'all know. Oh, hey Benji. Hi I'm Benji. Kate. I'm Kate. <laughs> Not you, your son. Anyway, fucking Ben said hi. <laughs> Um, He's like, oh, Kat saying hello to me. Hi. Oh my God. Like, I'm not fucking talking to you. Hi. Hi, Kat. Ah, I, don't know, Kat. I can't see it. Sorry. Kat, look. I can't. I'm not a seer. Um, it just, it wasn't connected to anything. It was just there. It was just there. Just there. there. Like, doing nothing. 
And this is how we create healings. We go through the things and we figure out the things and we go, what the fuck is this? What is this connected to? What is this? Am I a part of this? Are you a part of this? What is this doing here? We just ask all the who, what, where, when, why, and hows, and we figure it the fuck out. And then we go, uh, if it's not supposed to be like this, get the fuck rid of it. And then we go, oh, if it's supposed to be attached, attach it. But then it's always like, only if it's supposed to be, only if it's in the highest good. And it keeps our like, well, now our channeling is pretty clear with it and we know exactly what to do. But when we first started, we were really like even more careful than we are now, which we're pretty careful with verbiage. And we are, we're always asking to undo things we shouldn't have fucking done. Benji asked, is Olive a uh, part of Lucifer? He likes to sing Lucifer at her. He just goes up to her. He thinks that she's a little cunt, but it's because he cuddles and hugs her and she scratches him. Oh, that's uh, that's your own fault, Benji. Anyway. (laughs) Interesting. Um, Yeah, it wasn't... It it was just sitting there. They put electrical uh, hookups to it. Like, they wanted it to be something. And, uh... No, it was never anything, so y'all get nothing. Good, 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 good day, sir. Day, sir. That's like one of my favorite times. Okay. You get nothing. That's from um, Young Frankenstein, the audio. Oh. And it's the guy that plays. It's the same guy. Oh, wait, it is from Willy Wonka. It's the same guy. Oh. But it is from Willy Wonka. You're right. Gene, Gene Wilder? Yeah. I don't know how I knew that. Anyway, okay. All right. Uh, we wanna... That's that's it. That's it. That's all, all we right. got. Ah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We don't know if this is going to be one of our podcast episodes or not. This is just a, bu- a bonus episode. Um, TikTok was being really weird with us, and so we have been going live on ig but we wanted to try it this way and see we can't see each other's comments so that kind of sucks but other than that we can both we can both do this (gasps) thanks for hanging out with us guys yeah don't be disconnected everyone i love you bye also I'm just going to keep saying, um, I feel like you guys should never just take anything that anybody says online or spirituality or anything. Uh, 100%. You always should ask who, where, what, one, who, where, how, why, all those questions. Find out for your fucking self. Don't just believe the things said. And uh, also, if someone says something and you ask them a question, they sure as fuck should have an answer for you. Otherwise, it's just regurgitated bullshit. Okay. All right. That was it. All right. Bye. To book a dual session with Kate and Kat, visit either of our websites listed in the description of this video. For a spirit guide reading, you can book with Captain Kate at www.captainkate.com. For a one-on-one trauma healing session with Cat and Boots, you can visit www.catandboots138.com.